You may have heard the Supporter Shield is up for grabs this weekend in Seattle when the Sounders and Galaxy clash on NBC. For the sixth time in MLS history, the Shield winner will be decided on the season's final round. And should LA win, they'll make history by capturing their fifth such title. Meanwhile, Seattle, they're shooting for their first, sitting in pole position with either a win or a draw, bringing the Shield to Cascadia for the very first time. It's kind of a big deal, and it's a cool story too because while you may know what the Supporters' Shield represents, you probably don't know the history behind the reward for regular season excellence in MLS. At its core, the Supporters' Shield is an award created by the fans for the fans, an authentic manifestation of supporters' culture that eventually became an integral part of MLS award season. And there's no one better than one of the main men behind the creation of the Shield, Sam Perron, to give us a little history lesson. Sam, welcome to MLS Now. Glad to be here. All good right. to hear you. Yeah, we're, we're glad to have you. Well, let's start at the beginning here. I said you were going to give us a little history lesson. Where did the idea come from? What was that genesis moment for the Supporters' Shield? Well, there was a uh, yeah, people from around the country before, uh, before some of the more sophisticated forms of uh, Internet talk uh, had an uh, had a email list, a North American soccer list that... Uh, that people from around people from around the country, around the world, used and really formed a lot of the first uh, organizing. Sam's Army, and then uh, when MLS kicked off, a lot of the uh, supporters clubs. And on that list, somebody mooted the idea of a uh, of a, an award presented by the supporters to the regular season champions. And people thought that was a grand idea. And a committee was put together uh, when representative from each city to uh, to investigate this and the committee came to some decisions that uh, uh, the original creator uh, from uh, who was a Tampa Bay Mutiny supporter uh, named Nick Lowry, uh he didn't like anybody else's suggestions so he took his ball and went home um, and it sat in the, on the back burner for a little while and then I uh, kind of picked it up again, and I was the chair of the committee and said, hey, we're going to do this one way or the other. So uh, we started started fundraising. Uh, right, about, right about then was also the time of the first uh, MLS Supporters Summit uh, in Los Angeles, put on by uh, Michael Breton and friends in L.A. And uh, we did, did our fundraising, uh, get presented to the league what we were going to do, uh, and got a uh, you know got got our money together got a budget and uh, got it built and then it was presented uh, in the, uh, the spring of uh, 99 so it takes till 1999 how did you gather that momentum where did the money come from and then how did you actually produce this thing because if you look at it now it it's a polished product it's 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 a professional grade thing and I, I read somewhere that you guys paid a couple thousand dollars to get it built yeah, well, the, the the original supporters, the original supporter shield was uh, the fundraising. The funds all came, came mostly came from individual donations. Uh, some of the supporters groups uh, pooled their funds and donated together. Uh, we had some larger individual donations, especially from uh, our soccer broadcasting friend Phil Shane, who was a, really the first big donor, and also commissioner uh, then commissioner Doug Logan also chipped in himself. Uh, so we, it was a uh, crowdsourced effort, and we put it together, figured out how much we had, and then I had a vision in my head for a uh, for a design, and found an artist uh, to put it together, and uh, got it got it built in a relatively short period of time. You know, the the shield that's presented today came out of the efforts of uh, lots of people over the past few years, including. Sean Dane, head of the head of the Cauldron, um, you know, cost ten times as much as the as the original did, and is uh, is enormous and and gorgeous, and uh, I think that the two shields kind of are representative of uh, where U.S. soccer supporters culture uh, was at each of their respective places in time. Two shields, same idea behind them, Sam. For you, what does all this represent? It's still going strong. The supporters' shield, a valued part of the MLS awards season something teams fight over every single year. How much pride do you take in, in this being kind of organic, coming from that early soccer culture and then evolving? Uh, I'm not going to lie. It's, uh, it's pretty incalculable. Uh, 
and you, you, you occasionally it's occasionally I catch myself getting inured to it where <laughs> you know, it's just like oh yeah they're talking about the supporter shield again on you know national television or oh yeah there are people parading the supporter shield around uh, no no it's actually it's actually kind of awesome and I'm really proud of it uh, it's it's an it's really a great testament to uh, the the growth of the soccer supporters culture in uh, in the U.S. and you know the kind of the the good, the good things that can happen with uh, collective action and not keeping uh, not keeping ourselves siloed based on uh, you know what team we support. There you have it, the Supporters Shield up for grabs this weekend. Seattle Sounders, LA Galaxy, 2.30 p.m. on NBC and TSN2. One of these two teams will take it home. And Sam, we thank you uh, a ton for coming on here today on MLS Now. My pleasure. Good to talk to you. All right, thank you. As I said, Seattle Sounders, LA Galaxy, this weekend, make sure you check it out. Let us know what you think of this interview in the comments section below.